John chapter 3, beginning from verse number 1. John chapter 3, verse number 1. Choir, I salute you in the name of Jesus Christ. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you click on the word see, in that scripture, that word is ido in Greek language. And ido in Greek language means to perceive through the agency of senses. To perceive through the agency of senses. Now, the idea of Jesus' response in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 3, is this. When you were in your mother's womb and you were nine months old, you had senses, you had eyes, but the eyes were not meant for the womb. You had hearing, your ears were fully developed, but your ears were not meant for the womb. You had to be born first before your physical senses became relevant. It was when you were born that your eyes became relevant, your eyes became functional. There was nothing wrong with them when you were nine months in the womb, but they were not relevant because they were not designed to function in the womb. In the same way, you need to be born again. First of all, you have spiritual senses built into your spirit man but those spiritual senses will not be mobilized, they will not be activated until you become born again. When the Spirit of God is factored with your human spirit, the evidence of your salvation will be that your human spirit will be mobilized by the presence of the Holy Ghost in your spirit man and your spiritual senses will begin to pop up. That's what Jesus is saying. And this was the closest opportunity that Jesus had to define what it meant to be born again. And instead of a definition, he gave us an illustration that is rooted in experience. Now, in our journey with God, in our business with God, we must differentiate between that which is spectacular and that which is supernatural. In our walk with God, we must separate that which is of the soul and that which is of the spirit. If by any means you are going to be a victim of divine guidance, you must be able to decipher the activities that are factored upon the soil of your soul and the activities that derive from the Spirit of God. I have a long study I've done on how to decipher if a thought is from your soul or from your spirit. A long study built upon the revelation of the Urim and the Tumim. How to de decipher if it is coming from your soul or coming from your spirit. I've not seen the need for us to go into that yet. If the Lord says so, then that will take us seven days. If we need to digress into that, it will take us seven days. Your hearing in the spirit is what determines your profit. If you are going to walk with God and you don't have the ability to hear him, your prayer will provoke the realm of the spirit and when feedback comes to you, you will not have the requisite discernment to be able to place the frequencies that are coming from God. That means you lack what it takes to profit from the Spirit of God. And the promise that God gave us, the, the personality he gave us, with which he expects that everything 
that makes for life and godliness will be at our disposal happens to be the Holy Ghost. Are you there? And I said God's answer is God's spirit and God's spirit is what? God's answer. So when God answers you, his spirit goes to work. And if you don't have what it takes to be able to discern the movements of his spirit and to interpret the promptings of his spirit, it means you have been sentenced to walk in darkness. So we need to cure our sight problem. <laughs> I, I, I thought there would be amen supporting <laughs> We need to cure our hearing problem. We need to cure our perception problem. Because these are the channels of feedback that God makes available. And if you can interpret the feedback mechanism of the Holy Spirit, it will be easy for you to profit with God. So as you stir up the realm of the Spirit with a sacrifice, your receptacle must be in good shape to pick up the frequencies that will be coming from the Spirit of God. That's how to prepare for God. Your receptacle must be aligned to receive his frequencies and your discernment must be in place to decipher the meaning of his promptings and his movements. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. So in yesterday's lecture, we stopped at identifying the channel of God's feedback called vision. And I told us that there are three types of vision recognized in the Bible. And even experientially, I've gotten, I have experience of these three types of vision. I don't know at what point the Lord will approve for us to begin to do practicals, practicals, practicals. I don't know when he will approve it. And the reason for practicals is not to show that we have spiritual ability is for you also to be able to relate with the experiences that you are having and for you to trust the experiences that you have been having. Today is what day of the week? Today is a, it's, it's Thursday. Okay, so tomorrow being Friday. Now, what we are going to do tomorrow is that I was, one of our senior friends that has been following the meeting sent me, came to me and said, is it possible to give the people an opportunity to ask questions? And because there's been so much bombardment for, <laughs> for so many days. And uh, so we are going to do that tomorrow. And we are going to, our preference will be those people that are online. People that are in-house, your questions are not entertained. Those of you that are um, up there, um, who is on the desk? Can you find out a way they can ask questions? Uh, the person on the desk, just put, put up um, an email address quickly, your own personal email address. Put it there and let that be the address for all the questions that will come in from the online audience. And the one whose email address is there, please see me in the office at the end of this lecture. Okay. So Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So in the, in the response of Jesus here, we see that there is a realm called the realm of the kingdom of God. There is a dimension, there is a civilization called the civilization of the kingdom of God. It's a sphere where God is king. It's a sphere where God is the one that rules. It's a sphere where God is the one that reigns. And except you are born again, you will not have the utensils required to articulate the realities that are obtainable in this sphere. In, in, you will think that the sphere does not exist because you don't have what it takes to interact with it. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, your calling, the description of your essence, your purpose in life, your purpose in ministry, 
the line, the way God wants you to serve him. Those are realities that you cannot obtain anywhere else except in that realm that is called the kingdom of God. In that realm where God reigns supreme as king. You will need to be born again first. And then you'll be given the utensils to be able to access and articulate that realm so that you can draw your essence from the witness that is obtainable in that civilization. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, those of you physically present here, I would like to challenge you. In my little experience, uh, I've met people that have money. I may not, I may not categorize myself as one of them, but even though the Lord is faithful to me, right? But I've met, <laughs> I've met people that have money and haven't made, I mean, the kind of money that is an abomination for a human being to have. That's what I, that's what I'm talking about. I've, I've met, <laughs> I've met, <laughs> I've met a few people that have such money. And when you come close to them, he doesn't even know why. The purpose of the money that he has. Come and see the level of confusion. Hey, it's on the high side. So the money, you are, because most of you are, running, you are looking for money desperately. The money you are looking for, people that have found it, are still confused. So the objective for which God put us here is not to chase money. In fact, Jesus became plain one of those days and he told us how to live life upon the face of the earth. His prescription for human life is that we seek as a matter of priority. That's the first time the word proton in the Greek was used. Seek ye proton. And as a chemist, I can explain, I can use my knowledge in chemistry to explain why the Greek word proton was used in that scripture. But the intention tonight is not to bamboozle you with human knowledge, knowledge that will only end in the soul. I want you to be equipped with practical spiritual advantage so that you know how to take your journey. Two times that word was used in the Bible. When in the book of Revelation, when uh, the spirit of the Christ was saying to the congregation at Ephesus that they have lost their first love. It was proton. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. It was proton. So Jesus' description of how human life should be engaged is by seeking as a matter of priority the kingdom of God, the position of the kingdom of God. And the reason for this advice is that it is possible for you to marry the kind of wife you like in the flesh. Not because there's any kingdom vision attached to it. It is possible for you to choose a career. Are you, are you there? Based on marketability. <laughs> hey. And you do everything that you do. The pillars of your life have been built out of human intellect, trends and patterns, sensus and pulling. And you finish all of that. Then when you now begin to press into God, you now discover that there's a different architecture that has been ordained for you to walk in. It will, it will cause you emotional trauma for you to begin to demolish many things that you have spent your life building and it's not a good place to be even though it is possible so he's saying as a matter of priority do what seek ye what proton first the kingdom of god and how can you seek the kingdom of god when you are not born again when your spiritual senses you don't know <laughs> how to read them because your spiritual senses are the only utensils that you have available to explore the realities that are obtainable in the kingdom of God concerning your life. 
So the issue of perception in the spirit is a critical issue. It's a critical issue that we believers must master. I don't know how we will do it. But in one of these evenings, we need to take out 25 minutes. And we are going to pray until the unction of the Holy Ghost inside of your spirit switches on. And if you lie, well, we know that your own, your own, your, your own is off. <laughs> well, we know, we know, God, no, it's off. It has not yet. Invest, invest more in the spirit. Provoke the oppression of Christ within, within your spirit, man. And one of the ways to provoke the oppressions of Christ in order to mobilize the unction of the Holy One that sits on your heart is to exercise your spirit in prayer, exercise your spirit in worship. Because it was Jesus that said, worship is not, you are, we are not capable of worship except in the spirit. So spiritual activity that will engage your spirit as you are doing it, the operation of Christ energizes your spirit to be able to transact and in the process, the unction switches on. The instrument of spiritual knowledge is activating. Hallelujah. So we spoke about the three types of vision. The first one we saw yesterday is the night vision. The night vision. Job chapter 20 verse 4 to 8. Job chapter 20 verse 4 to 8. Please, the man on the desk, don't forget to put an email address to our esteemed audience online. If I say we should send questions, I, we won't finish that day. So um, how are we going to do it? We are not going to do it. Job chapter 20, verse 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since men was placed upon the earth that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the glory of the hypocrite but for a moment. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet shall he perish for like his own dung, they which have seen him shall say, where is he? Verse 8, he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. So another name for a dream is a vision of the night. And I would like you to understand something here. Are you there? Are you there? You know, I, I told you we must be able to decipher the difference between the supernatural and the spectacular. The spectacular is something that dazzles the human soul. The soul looks upon it in wonder. And the spectacular is not necessarily spiritual. The spiritual is quiet. The spiritual is not dramatic. But the spiritual can only happen because a spirit being registers it. The ability to decipher between that which is spectacular. Now, are you, are you still following me? Are you still here? Now, there is, oh my God, in ministry, because a lot of preachers discovered that the average Christian is a carnal person. So in order to keep them perpetually dazzled, you know, you come, there's a way you dress, you know, you just dress like that. You dress up. You dress in a way that the average person you are preaching to cannot dress. So that there is something about you that is always a wonder. Your shoe has pebbles of gold upon it. Then you begin to talk about your trip to Australia. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And so you keep the people in, in limbo. And uh, there is this dramatic presentation that is ultimately soulish to paint yourself as a superstar. 
And that was the kind of stuff that was obtainable in the U.S. That's what, that was why most of our leaders ran to the U.S. to seek perspective on how to implement the same kind of ministry. And ministry became pomp and pageantry. It became spectacular. It was no longer supernatural. When the Holy Spirit left through the back door, nobody knew because everybody was in saying, Hey, yeah, hey, ho, ma, hi, yeah, ho, yeah. Ah! May the Lord give you understanding. The exodus of this moment is about migrating from that spectacular place of emptiness into the supernatural place where the Holy Ghost resides. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Are you there? Now, so in a dream, what God does, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to see if you noticed it. Job chapter 33 verse 15. That's the second scripture to establish the night vision as the, it, in a dream, in a vision of the night. So you always see them clarifying what a dream means by mentioning that it is a vision of the night when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed. So you see, it is used interchangeably for a dream. So a dream is what I mean by night vision. Then number two, we have what is called a trance. We have what is called a trance. In Acts chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, we can find out what a trance is. Acts chapter 10, verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. I'd like you to underline fell. He fell into a trance. The, the word fell is normally included to give us an insight into the experience that leads to a trance. You see, in a dream, what God does is that he allows you to go to sleep. And in going to sleep, your physical senses are shut down. And then his spirit activates your spiritual senses. So dreams are easier for you to have. But because they are easy for you to have, are you there? Because they are easy for you to have, even demons too can give you dreams. Demons too can give you some dreams and if you don't know, if you are not rich in the word of God to decipher the content of what is being communicated in your dream life, and to trace its origin, whether it is from the devil or from God. And most believers don't even have time to check. And a lot of feedback is lost just because it comes through the agency of, of dreams. Now, if I don't know if it will be necessary, but if it will, we might need to take a journey into the dreams of Joseph. I, I believe the dream of the Bible is Joseph. So if, I don't know if the Holy Spirit will permit that, we might take a trip into the dreams of Joseph and then I'll just give you some handle with which you can judge dreams. Just a quiet hand. I won't go deep. But there is such a handle that we can get from the dreams of Joseph. Okay? But I'm not sure the Lord wants that yet. So in a dream... Your physical senses go to sleep. Then he smuggles something through the spirit avenue. Okay? In a trance, you are well awake. And then at the time that God wants to give you the vision, the angel pours the unction of sleep on you. This sleep I'm talking about will only catch up with you for 30 minutes, 30 seconds. You just go like that. 
He, the angel immobilizes you and sends you to sleep in 30 seconds. As you are falling into that sleep, you are picking up that vision. Are you there? Whereas, 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 it is very possible for demons to give you dreams. It is 99.9% .9 impossible for demons to give you a trance. So in the prophetic, we trust trances more than dreams. Except you are that vessel that God has trained in the way of dreams. If I have a dream, I will not share it here. But I know that people like Jangfa have been trained in the way of dreams. And most of his prophecies come through that avenue. Yes, I, I know that because he's my disciple. For more than 16 years, he's, he's been my disciple. I knew him when he had no vision in him. Yes, I knew him when he had no vision in him. I knew him when the Lord encountered him. I saw him grow in the grace of a prophet. Yes. So, and he has told me things that I ignored, that I suffered. So, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> The, I'm not trying to make you feel I'm a spiritual man. I know my own gift. It's a small gift that God gave me. I hope to preserve it and for the whole world to eat of it. I know my gift. But you know, in Christianity, what we are here for is not to compete. That guy has a major gift in the area of the prophetic. The, he has it much more than I do. And the idea of the body of Christ is that we are supposed to survive by interdependence and not by independence. So God did not give one man everything. And it's even easier for you to collect from people than to generate your own. <laughs> so I collect, I collect. <laughs> I collect from here, I collect from there. So this young man, don't joke. If he comes and says, I, I dream about you, go and, go and weep. <laughs> because it will come to pass. But I've not seen so many vessels that have been trained in the area of dreams like he is. If I'm going to teach you from my own personal experience, I will, I will tell you that I trust trances, trans, a trance, more than a dream. But if the Lord deals with you, it can become an avenue that is a very powerful tool. All right? Is that clear? So it is only at the spur of the moment, at the time where the vision is going to come, that's when the angel activates that sleep. And as you are falling into the sleep, you are falling into the vision. So in a trance, you always see the word fail. Is that clear? The word fail there is to give us an experiential understanding of how a trance takes place. He fell into a trance. Even in, in service like this, as powerful as the service is, you just see yourself struggling with one sleep, and then the sleep just comes forth. 15 seconds. And as you are falling into the sleep, you see the vision, and then the sleep leaves you permanently. Don't joke with anything you see. It, it, it is a sign from God. Is that clear? Yes. Then um, Numbers chapter 24 verse, this is complicated, Numbers chapter 24 verse 1 to 4, but Yes, I want to bring this complicated scripture uh, so that we can design uh, the scripture. And when Balaam saw it pleased God to, to bless Israel, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments, but he set his face towards the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, had said, The man whose eyes are open had said, This is his curriculum vitae. Balaam, the son of Beor, First qualification, the man whose eyes are open. Second qualification, 
he had said, which heard the words of God, which saw the visions of the Almighty. So he, he has hearing, he has seen, and then he also has the experience of falling into trances, but having his spiritual eyes open. Meanwhile, this is, the, this is actually the full template of someone that operates in the prophetic office. If you don't have, if you don't have any of this, eh, you are not a prophet. A true prophet in that office should have all of this. Even though I have some. Hallelujah. Okay, let me leave myself out of this matter now. <laughs> That is not my, that is not my f full area. I have, I have some. Yes, I have some. Some are not as frequent as the others. But I've operated in these four areas. Right? But what makes a major prophet different from a min minor prophet is that the major prophet receives many messages. So in terms of the prophetic, I think I fall into the category of the minor. My friends who are real major prophets are operating in that office. If he, he sleeps, if he sleeps, his sleep is not in vain. He will wake up and say, ah! <laughs> Aye, Jesus Christ, he sleeps. You just wake up in the night. You say, what is happening? He say, there are demons in your house. There are demons. <laughs> you know, grace is different. The Lord made us different. And if you study your Bible very well, you find out that there are no two same prophets in the, in the entire Bible because of the reason for which God raises them, because of the era in which he raises them, because of the assignment for which he raises them. There is no basis of comparing any two prophetic messengers. But every true prophetic messenger must have these symptoms. He must have open visions. He must have the hearing ear. He must have trans experiences. Right? Open visions, he must have the hearing ear. That means he has sight, he has hearing, and he has perception in the heart. He must be able to transmit from the heart, from the eyes, from the ears. That's what makes a prophet. And there is no sword that rises that will escape his sight. Are you there? So this guy gave us his curriculum vitae, and part of it is that he falls into a trance. Is any time the word trance is mentioned, you will see falling. He falls into a trance. And I'm not saying, are you there? Are you following? The moment you begin to do the kind of thing we are doing now, you are fasting, you are praying, you are pressing into God, these powers will be activated in you. Whether or not you are a prophet, the thing is that for the prophet it will be more frequent. That's just the difference. But for you that is not a prophet, you can also operate in open visions, you can fall into trances, you can have the ear of the spirit and hear whispers of the Holy Ghost and whispers in the council of angels, whispers in the council of heaven, the ear of the spirit. It comes to you, it becomes activated. So you can pick things in the spirit. And I need to say this quickly. Even if you are a prophet and called into the office, there is one channel that is strongest on your life. There is one channel that is strongest. Let me give you an insight. Are you there? There is a channel that is strongest for every prophet. And indeed, if you have come to the realm of the seer, if you have come to the realm of the seer, which is someone that is strong in open visions, there is no way a seer is not a prophet. A seer must be a prophet, but not every prophet is a seer. But if you operate in the realm of the seer, it means that you are a prophet. If we begin to pray now, 
45% of the time, I will enter into the realm of a seer. 45% of the time. I will start seeing things. Not every time. 45% of the time. I start seeing stuff. So when I'm traveling, maybe flying, I just begin to speak in tongues. And when you turn like this, you see the person sitting by your side carrying things. When you... <laughs> When the Lord begins to open your eyes, the first thing you must learn is how to keep quiet. He is not showing it to you so that you can do anything. He just, he, he is, you are becoming his friend, so he talks to his friends. You pray in tongues, pray, and you do, look like this. Ah. It's the realm of a seer. You will need to cultivate a lot of discipline to be able to manage that realm. We're able to manage that realm. All right? When we start praying and fasting like this, when I go through the first threshold of resistance and I break beyond that hold, then there's an angel that comes to visit me in the morning. If I don't want the visitation of that angel, then I'll start eating. If the fasting finishes and I no longer fast, If I start fasting and I do 20 days, 21 days, then I'll start having those encounters in the morning. Sometimes it comes with a song. Most times it comes with a song and begins to sing. Then I can hold the song in my spirit for one hour. If danger wants to take place that day, it will, it will, it will minister that danger to me. 5 a.m. in the morning. This person is coming. Just leave home. Drive away. Leave. That's when I would call Titus. Titus in the village. I said, I'm coming to visit you. Not because I had the intention. It's a way of... <laughs> hey! The life in the spirit is the best life. Do not walk on the ground. Do not do mundane existence. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach you life. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. So these four areas are predominant in the manifestation of a prophetic person. So that's, did we see any scripture? Open vision, open vision. Um, let us see. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 1. I'll just put that on the, the burden of Babylon which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. The content of the book of Isaiah uh, were from vision encounters. Now, in visions, God communicates using pictures. You see, that's the most condensed means of communication. And in these visions, the person doesn't go to sleep. His physical eyes and his spiritual eyes are open at the same time. The experience of a vision is that your spiritual eyes doesn't go to sleep, and your your physical eyes doesn't go to sleep, and your spiritual eyes is not as clear as your physical eyes. But it's, it's, you will know you are seeing, but it's not as clear. So don't ever think it will be as clear as your physical eyes. No. It will never be as clear as your physical eyes. But you will know what you are seeing. It will be very distinct. I don't know whether it's inside I see it or outside, but I see it. And I've worked in it for some years, more than 16 years, so I know the difference. I know what I'm seeing. It will take you time to be able to articulate what you're actually seeing until you become perfect in your visions. It's just like uh, someone that is using a, a camera that has a lens, and uh, he needs to focus the lens so that the images will be clearer. As you grow in the baptisms of the Spirit, you come to a point where the lens of your spirit becomes very, very clear, blazing clear, and you cannot miss anything that you see. So the thing about visions is that it affords you the opportunity to be able to pack in so much detail. Now, for instance, I'm standing here in church and I'm standing before the congregation. At least in my eye view, I can see about 50 to 60 people just facing this side. That's a lot of detail. Imagine how it will look like if you need to hear, hear this information that covers 50, 60 people. 
to hear it. It's going to take maybe one hour. But in just one sweep of sight, a lot of detail has been captured. And that's why when huge revelations are coming, they come in form of open visions. And this is the experience that Isaiah is trying to reveal to us. He received visions about God's body pertaining to the nation of Babylon. Every stroke of vision comes with his own body of details. So when God wants to say many things, what he does is that he gives visions. He speaks with pictures, not in words. When God wants to emphasize, then he speaks in words. And you see, God will start with you with very short sentences. If he begins to speak with you, he will not speak long sentences. He will speak very short sentences. You will need to master how to receive short sentences for many years before he begins to speak long sentences to you. These short sentences that I'm talking about are pregnant. He might say them to you, and you might think you understand it. It is the next five years that the interpretation of that short sentence that God communicated to you will now be revealed. The prophetic is treacherous. You will need a lot of experience to be able to unravel it at national level, unravel it at community level. You need a lot of patience and a lot of discipline. Sometimes God is communicating. It's not because he wants his words to be spoken. And some other times he will say what he wants to say. And when he so says, you want to keep it a secret, he will flog you and say, come on, climb to the housetop and cry out. He will tell him, you know, if I cry out, there will be trouble. He said, it means you have forgotten who I am. If you are afraid of what man can do to you, it means you do not know me. Are you there? I want you to know that if you are a vessel that is going to bear uh, prophetic things, revelatory things, you must be open to persecution. In fact, persecution is one of the ingredients that shows that you have been designed as a messenger that will carry God's prophetic message from place to place. Because when you come to a people that are rebellious and God gives you a judgment, the way you will know that the people are rebellious is that even though it is a judgment and there is evidence that the judgment has started coming to pass, the people will still be content. It's a rebellious house. And for a rebellious house, what God does is that he sends a prophet. Are you there? Everyone that begins to exercise his powers of priesthood, begin to pray in the night, and you are serious about the business of prayer, serious about the business of fasting, suddenly your perceptions will begin to open up. Because it is the blessing that every believer has, irrespective of whether they operate in the office or not. Perception is a blessing that we all have, and a proof that when in talking terms with the spirit of grace, that has galvanized a regenerated human spirit. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Okay. You know, I supported it with one scripture yesterday, uh, and that was Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 to 27. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 to 27. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Next verse. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured. That's my emphasis. He endured. Why did he endure? Because he saw him who is invincible. He endured. The way you know that a man has seen something is if he can endure in his stand, endure in his conviction, even though he's unpopular, even though he's not on the popular side, 
even though an entire generation doesn't consider him to be in sound mental health, he endures. When you find a man in the midst of corruption that refuses to be corrupt, even though it will attract persecution in corrupt systems, it means he has seen something. His ability to endure is a sign that he has seen him that is invincible. A pastor came here the other day. He came here 12 years ago. And when he came here, he said, an angel appeared to him. And the angel showed him, showed me to him, that I'm his spiritual father. But he should stop what he's doing and come and walk under me. So when he came, I said, we'll be waiting for you. You are welcome. And then I asked him to go with Chief Donatus, for Chief Donatus to show him the way of the turbine, the way of prayer. He's yet to resume 12 years later. He's yet to resume. He endured. Why? Because he saw him who is invincible. When we built this place and we began to fit in the chairs, blue chairs this way, red chairs that way, oh my God. Then he came back and he said, that vision is still outstanding. The vision is still. Then he had married. He came with, a, with his wife and said, the vision, the vision is still available. There was, <laughs> oh God, there was no evidence that anybody spoke to him because he could not what? End it. He could not end it. Another pastor came and he was, he was doing well where he was and he came and said, God has asked him to come. So, wow, okay, we don't have any vacancy for people that preach. So we only have vacancy um, in the technical room. He went there. And we forgot him there for two years. I, I was preaching on the pulpit when God said, that, that, man, that my man that I sent, bring him out. So after the service, I called him. I said, now vacancy has been created for you on the pulpit. So he began to function. He began to function. He unlearned so many things and his heart was right. Hallelujah. Before we knew it, a door opened to somewhere in Europe. And uh, the Lord moved him there. Hallelujah. The last time I called him, I said, do you know what cold is? He's, he, he has lost his voice because he exposed, he, he, he had not seen that kind of cold before. Minus seven. Now he has entered his mission field. The reason was because God sent him. And he was able to endure in the technical office. That's a man, I don't want to go into his CV, but that was where he was for two, two years. There was evidence that God spoke to him because he did what? Endure. 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 So the question is, if we look at your life, will it, would there be proof that you saw something? Somebody came with a business proposal to uh, one of my friends. If he makes those statements, say, ah, by the grace of God, he makes them say in the name of Jesus. I, I told my friend, that's a thief. He's a thief. <laughs> my friend did not believe me. Is there anything? Say, yes, God's power will do it. God's mercy. He duped my friend of millions of, of net. He has not recovered from the shock. <laughs> May your spiritual eyes be open in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Number four. Can we still do this number four today or we postpone it? Then we'll postpone this number four so that I can use. Ah, my time is up. Jesus. I want us to practice this vision. I want us to practice it. My time is already up. We will continue tomorrow. Yes, now. That's what the, the time board is saying. It was not running. Oh, the time board was not running. Well, it's not my fault. The, the, the inaccuracy is not my, it's not my doing. Okay, let me drop something quickly.
Tomorrow, that is a day for questions. We'll collect the questions. We'll take the questions. And then we'll have time, little time, 15 minutes, to practice and see if your unction can come up. If you lie, I will know. If you are not a friend of God in the place of prayer, if you are not a friend of God, it will take you one hour, 20 minutes for your unction to come up. If you are a friend of God, it can take you 15 minutes. If you are very close to him, 10 minutes. If you are very, very close to him, five minutes. So it takes me five minutes to hear God. I can check anything. I can check anybody. I can check any information. I can check it. I can check it. I can check it. We went to the visa, uh, uh, visa collection center. I wanted to help a young man, and he began to lie. I just, I was patient. I allowed him lie. Light, the Bible says, is that which makes manifest. In vain is a trap set in the sight of a bed. Once he has light, you set the trap for him in vain. That's how you are supposed to be. Somebody is trying to put something up to send the spirit of death, you, but in your watches, you saw it. Then you just dial the person's number and say, Well done, no, well done, no. Well done. Well done. Sometimes the gifts can be so strong. When you call them like that and you, and you, and you speak to them, you too, you are, you are there. They will think that one of them gave them out. But they don't know it's the seer's gift. Light is that which makes manifest. You are not supposed to walk in darkness. You are supposed to have light. Oh my. Light. Light. Only people without light are anxious. No. I parted with anxiety a long time ago. You bring pressure to me, you will just discover that there's no pressure because I've seen through it. Light is that which makes money. We were traveling somewhere, then our car broke down. So we packed it. The mechanic was working on it, was working on it. Meanwhile, I was exercising my spirit. I like traveling because it gives me the opportunity to do long range of prayers, long range. So when he was working on the engine, trying to see what was wrong, he brought out the part that had gone bad. We paid for it. He went and got one, and he was fixing it. Then he came and he greeted me. The moment he greeted me, the greeting echoed in my spirit. And light came out. The things that I told him that day, he said, no man ever spoke to me in this wise. He shook, trembled. Do you know how powerful it is for you to have a message from God for somebody? Went for a meeting and I was ministering. And the, he came and whispered to me and said, there is a woman that had a miscarriage two days ago. Go and comfort her. And when I began to speak about the case, more details now came. By the time I finished all the details, the woman believed that the pastor that invited me, who knows her case, must be the one that told. Instead of her to give glory to God, she, she went at the end of the service and went to the pastor and said, hey, why do you put my things in, in the public? The man said, I fear God too much to be able to do that. This Nigerian man, I just met him today. We have not had time to talk. And Before we knew it, people in, in their cabinet, all right, people in their cabinet began to escape into my room to confess. That evening was a day of confession. Take a message from God to your neighbor. That person you've been living with for so many years, the day you visit him one morning and say, Don't say the Lord God. And you open the secrets of his heart. If he wants to sin again, he will, he will believe that your eyes can see it. Light is that which makes manifest. Now let me show you something quickly. 
one of the feedback systems of the Holy Ghost. This one is very technical. So I'll use 15 minutes to talk about it. Tomorrow we are going to continue. It, it's called a sign. Give me Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. A sign. A sign. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Please underline signified. Signified. If you check the Greek word for signified, it's sign language, sign. The entire book of Revelation was communicated to John in angelic sign language. Angelic sign language. There are times when God decides to speak by signs. So I want to define for us. A sign is a non-verbal communication that points to something other than itself. A sign is a non-verbal communication that points to something other than itself. It is like a code whose true meaning can only be deciphered by the person it was addressed to. It is like a code whose true meaning can only be deciphered by the person it was addressed to. It can be a spiritual sign or a physical sign. Now, I will end with this definition tomorrow. I'm going to show you all across scriptures. When God gave prophets and mighty men signs, signs that will show, point to things, and if you know where, where to look, you will know how to fight. Because in your spiritual warfare, God equips you with so many signs, so many signs that gives you insight into the fact that he has arisen. For instance, if you are someone that is privileged to operate in the angelic council, and what I mean by that is in your ministry, God gives you access to be able to discern the presence of angelic personalities in your ministry. Many times you will hear their whisper. And their presence will be revealed to you by some signs. Signs that I cannot teach you. Signs that are supernatural. But whenever those signs begin to appear, I know that angels are in the room. And it is easy for me to coordinate with them. There are some signs that you receive from God when a healing anointing is in administration, for instance. Then it, 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 it gives you a sign. Some of you have started entering into the realm of science when you pray and you fast and you're pressing. Some of you feel something moving on your head. Huh? So those are signs. They have meanings. It is it's a spirit being that is communicating to you. When you master those signs and those signs begin to manifest, you will know what it means and then you begin to operate according to the anointing that has been opened. Not every form of communication is hey, ha, ho, he. No. Sometimes it's a sign. It's a sign. All right? Uh, I have eight minutes to go. I want to see if God will give me the grace to be able to discern the presence of angels that are associated with this ministry. Anytime God commissions a ministry, um, he attaches some angels anytime he gives a new calling he attaches some angels to assist you in accomplishing that new errand that he wants to send you to to fulfill i, I remember when uh, god wanted to begin to send me to the nations of the earth and he said that so he gave me competence in the area of the ministry of deliverance that i'm going to meet all kinds of devils all kinds of demons and whenever I meet those demons, I shall watch out for this sign. Because this sign is a proof that a very mighty angel has appeared to assist me in the spiritual protocols of warfare. Are you still here? No. Okay, so we are going to spend five minutes just praying in the spirit. That's how the process is always begun. 
begins. It begins when you begin to stir up your spirit. And then the operation of Christ begins to enlarge. His activity uh, begins to increase and, and things begin to, uh, to take place in the realm of the spirit through the stirrings that you are making available in the spirit. A ripple effect begins to build. Uh, a ripple effect begins to mount. There's an uh, accumulation of spiritual energy and God begins to migrate you from one level to another level and until he brings you into that energy level in the spirit where sight is capable where hearing is available where where understanding can be fetched oh my god can you exercise your spirit in a moment of time in a moment of time in a moment of time we are moving beyond the spectacular we are entering into the realm of the supernatural where sight is available where hearing resides we are moving we are moving in the spirit Bilakosimoorosamali Isca presco tabanda, i cabrahai to coselando, escobre, manda curia sacatula beda kisco, rahai scondamina ila, brescote cabacuse na handeli, eskile bonda, eskile silo bre, rahasco se, rahasco se, e bracatalia santola, e cateli mondelia, isco brama santela. Akosa brigabata kunde amasemi nakalia eskopanda lara tamasika bre esgali to konda mi esgali to samalando akanto sapris esgabresto baluata ebriata babonsa mante bre barakaske to brondo oskita bre gabala isai to na rakaba sendo konde lere isko paruske ta brambalata Rahasa <laughs> Is go babom balahasa, a capres conte mi, racabode basata planta babola tamina, asa planta babola cane, escobre la hara babula batala, jaminai tacabro, 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 jamabro, jababo, antababo, 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 sacaboliba cadevo. Shaka Boliba Skende, Abraita Kovela Didasa, Bratan Talababonde, Asika Pre, Akaba Bonsama, Akaba Bonse Ketala, Lepros Katama Bolia, Asia Prescote, Mahasa Priata Baboba Kapadata. Yes, he shall say.
So you know we've been talking about signs. In the name of Jesus. We've been talking about signs. So I started receiving a sign here. And anytime I have this sign in the center of my head, it means that God is anointing somebody. So in the next 17 seconds, you are going to see the anointing of God is going to come upon someone. The anointing of God will come so strong. It will come strong upon someone. God is anointing someone. He's anointing someone. He's anointing someone. He's anointing someone. He's anointing someone. Holy Ghost! But we have an unction from the Holy One. And we know all things. We have an unction. The moment the unction switches on, then you begin to know things. You begin to know things. Mysteries are unraveled. All kinds of things begin to open up. Oh my God. So I see the door open. I see it's already open. I see the door open in the spirit. It's an open door. Someone is being ushered. Someone is being ushered in. Someone is being admitted into this door that has opened in the spirit. Someone is being ushered. Someone is being admitted into the door. Open. Open. Isso será matar a água. 